The parts have been to cut today is mind blowing. I didn't realize that's all coming today. They are 12 inches wide. another video this is the beginning of the phoenix group b audi build one of my subscribers has seen we had the fire he's reached out to me and said look i've got a spoiler you can have it for free but i've also got a part way through built short wheelbase audi control come over and have a look have a walk around see how he shortened his shell and i can also show you guys what we mean by a short wheelbase a long wheelbase I want to talk about windscreen slopes. So as I've said, I've come over to look at a already converted short wheelbase shell. I've done this to kind of get some advice, have a look how they've done theirs, and basically dive in and see what has to be done and that I've got to do on the sheet metal side. So let's have a walk around and I'll point out some, some bits and pieces so you know the amount of work that these cars physically take. The name The Phoenix that we've kind of, as the community and myself have christened this, this build, could have been more fitting. As we know, the Audi was set on fire and we're going to get it built up to the Audi S1 E2 replica. So as you will have seen on my fire video, we have a windscreen slope. Now on all the short wheelbase conversions, they have this steeper windscreen slope and that was for glare for the drivers because they would complain that it was glared on the windscreen. So that's part what I've got to put in. And this one has been joined around this area and then pieced in all the way across. Very nice. And for me, this was off a four door, which is identical to what I've got. So I can dive in and have a look at what's been done and what hasn't been done. Now, what I didn't realize, which I've learned today, is the B post is slightly different. It's supposed to be a lot thinner than a normal coupe. Didn't realize that till coming today. Again, as with these things, I always want to learn and I always want to see the differences. So that's something I'm going to look at. But being honest, I don't think I'm going to do that part because we're guessing it's only about a five mil difference but this one is going to be the sports quattro and he wants it as close to the original as possible so diving inside you have to shorten the shell so if you look at the distance between there and there we're splicing a picture now of the long wheelbase you have to cut i think off the top of my head 320 mil out and shorten the complete shell up so to show that he has cut the sill around this area and pulled the full sill up and pieced it in but then cut along this line all the way along the back seat area shortened welded to so i can see word I need to do. It's supposed to be very common to follow this line, go along and go along there. So that's something I need to look at as well. He's obviously converted to left-hand drive. I don't think I'm going to do that on mine. My shell is a front-wheel drive shell. So it's nice to see this one was a quattro shell. So I need obviously in mine, I need to put a tunnel in. So it's nice to see what size tunnel to fit my gearbox in. I think I'm going to space frame a lot of this area anyway. Again, I can see what goes on. So let's go around the other side and let's have another look. The engine. I've got a 2.2 20 valve AAN engine out of it like an S2. I bought a set of steel rods off eBay and asked me to ring her because I'd won them. She said to me, what are you doing with these rods? So I explained the build, explained it was my dream and explained that, you know, it's something that I need to do in the engine and, and this car was my dream build. The rods were out of her husband's build project parts who had sadly passed away. It was nice to know that her husband's parts were carry on living. Going back to the Phoenix being reborn. So again, before the ground the other side, the sports quattro obviously has just a curved arch, which is, they are lovely. When I talking about mine, mine's going to be different, which I'm going to obviously talking about a little bit into spec. I want to make my full body out of metal because when I see fiberglass on body kits, if you see the black corsa, over time of using it quite often, it does go tatty. It cracks and it gets brittle. So I don't want that. I want to be able to use the car all the time. The parts have been to collect today is mind blowing. The story goes behind these parts I've collected, a gentleman called Graham Nash, who used to run Graham Nash Motorsport. He used to run Celine S7R, Le Mans cars. Last week he sadly passed away and I kind of got lucky I've been able to go and buy 
some of the parts from his collection and stores. So the thing that caught my eye, which I wanted, was a set of genuine BBS center lock wheels. They are 12 inches wide on the rears and 10 inches on the fronts. So my plan was to design the car around these wheels because I think the wide, they're going to look so great on the Audi and they're especially they're 18s as well so they're going to fill them big arches now this is the area obviously where a lot of work's done where you cut your section out you take your 320 mil out and you pull the car back in to make this small window but obviously when you cut it out there's no wheel arch tubs so these have had to be made and everything had to be shortened up to make it work obviously he's put full steel sills in people can see that there is a lot of metal work in this car and i did find out that supposedly this area is different as well it's supposed to be a lot thicker i didn't realize that till getting here today another thing i've spotted which he's told me is mine does not have this area this like thick area it's very thin and that's a change because this slope this this slope here is slightly different as well it's more pivoted up genuinely I don't think I'm going to do that with mine because I've never noticed it. It's the first time I've seen it. There's a lot of body modifications that I needed it with this car. Obviously, we've taken the, 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 the 320 mil out. We've put in the windscreen slope in. Luckily, you know, he had the four doors as well. So he's been able to, to line it up with the four door front door because what you do is you cut the post out, bolt your four door in, and it gives you the angle perfectly where you can work out your clearances so it's been nice to be able to stand in front of this this car and also it's been good to be able to look at the bonnet because i'm again going to do our sheet metal but it's been nice to see how the distance is take some pictures take measurements so i can replicate it in the future so as i turned up to the uh gentleman's workshop he said i've got all the other parts as well come and have a look come and see what you want to buy so let's dive into what I've bought. Two sets of suspension. And this is super high-end. Off the Le Mans cars. They are, I think, JRZ. They're still going today. Fully adjustable. And what's really interesting is they have these fittings so you can disconnect the remote canisters. Fully way adjustable. Really high-end. Probably the, the highest-end suspension money can buy. They're not bolt-on for the Audi. But again, I can make these fit and work around the wheel combination and the suspension combination. So I've got two sets of fronts, two sets of rears. Obviously that matches that one, that matches that one. So that's that. So I've got some really good suspension off a Le Mans car for the Audi. There was boxes and boxes and boxes of AN lines, AN fittings. Just for the build, I thought I better get them bought because they're gonna come in handy anyway. We got a free window net, what looks like a transmission cooler in there, which I'll probably use for the rear diff. And then this one, I had to talk myself into. Anyone who knows what this is, this is the Lance for air jack. We use this on the BTC Cavalier. And I'm guessing this is the one from the Le Mans car. So we're buying this it has forced me into basically fitting air jacks to the audi because i've got the tool now to make it work i will be keeping in touch quite often because it's not very far from me and i will be checking all the time to take pictures and ask questions get some advice from someone who's already done this so it's been nice that the journey's starting i'm doing my research and there's a lot of metal work to come. So follow me on this journey of, again, I'm gonna learn how to learn a lot of metal work skills. We're gonna build this and see where we end up. So we'll end this video here. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.